Hey, hey, looks like we're live. I was just talking with Karis before the stream began. English Arts Academy. Check her out on her channel after this live stream, of course. But she's going to be here answering your questions with me. Her channel's great. Um, I just want to say, anytime there's an English teacher on this channel, I just think the world of them. I'll never bring on an English teacher where you go over to their channel and you might be like, oh, this is crap. So I hope uh, she's celebrating 6,000 subscribers. She's doing some awesome stuff on her channel. So she'll be here in just a minute. But before we get started, I probably should introduce myself just in case you're new here. Yeah, I'm Brent. This is American English with this guy. And for the next hour or so, we will be talking with each other normal conversation so we might speak a little bit more quickly than you're used to some people in the comments on the stream in the past have asked hey can you speak a little more quickly so that might happen today and then we'll also take your questions but i do want to give a uh, big hello to anya she'll be in here moderating the chat if anyone's naughty she can boot them. She can kick them out. Elena, I know I've seen you in here, of course, but I know that you know Karis too. I've seen you in her chat. Hansa, how are you? Dear sir, madam, thanks a lot for your broadcast and effort. So sorry about my writing skills. What? They're fine. Nothing wrong with that, Hansa. And even if they were horrible, you're in the right place, right? You're learning English. That's all good. Good afternoon from Central Europe. Awesome. Great. So what do you say? Hey, Freddie Wolf. I know you from France. How are you? Tom, oh, short on time. Friends are visiting. Trying to get a little quick English lesson in. That's great. That's great. Mickey's here. And of course, Luke. Luke's here from Poland. So let's bring on Karis from English Arts Academy. She can introduce herself to you. And we'll get into a little conversation. We'll get into a little questions. So put your questions in the chat. You know, we've got to have a little something to, to answer here. All right, Karis. How <laughs> Hi, Brent. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. I so, liked your introduction. Did you? <laughs> I did. Thank you. I did. <laughs> Thank you. Trying to keep it cash. Trying to keep yeah. it casual. No, yeah. I was enjoying it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. So in case somebody in here doesn't know anything about your channel, which, hey, congratulations, 6,000 subscribers. That's something to celebrate. Do you mm -hmm. mind telling everyone a little bit about what you do on your channel? Because I do think it's it's unique. The way you do your lives is a little bit different from the way I do my lives. So, And I think they'll find out very quickly, you're not American, you're British. <laughs> so it's always good to hear another accent too. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So as you said, Brent, I am from the UK, from a city called Liverpool, which is in northwest of England. And yeah, I run the page English Arts Academy, which I've been running for almost, almost two years, but about a year and a little bit on YouTube. Um, so I started that on Instagram before I moved to YouTube, which is a whole other world <laughs> and yeah I'm kind of looking at conversational English um improving confidence of English learners because even I think Hans's comment there shows that he had no reason to apologize for his writing but yet he felt he had to for some reason um so I always want to say to my students please don't apologize for your English <laughs> you're showing up and you're practicing and you're learning and that's what counts um and yeah that's kind of that's kind of it about boosting confidence looking at conversational English having some fun kind of breaking down I guess the barriers for maybe how people have learned English in schools um maybe making it slightly more modern, I think, more current, um, because I do think, I know you're an English teacher in a school, no, Brent, so I will no, tread no, no. carefully. <laughs> I understand. I, yeah. Uh, so, and I think a lot of people, if they're watching, learning English, 
I think if you go to a classroom, it's heavy on the grammar, which, yeah. and I've seen you, which is great. You will bring guests on from the chat where they can practice speaking with you, which is amazing. Yeah, definitely. I mean, so I started doing that because the number one question I was getting asked was, I have no one to practice speaking with. Um, who can I practice with? And I was like, well, you can practice with me. You can practice on YouTube. But then I noticed in starting doing those, um, or that style of live classes, not as many people actually are willing to come on and speak. Um, I get a lot of people who say, yes, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to join you. But when it actually comes to doing it, they chicken out, they're too shy, they get afraid. And I think that's quite interesting because I think, you know, unfortunately, if you do want to improve in English, you're going to have to put yourself out there. You have to produce the language and, you know, using social media platforms is an awesome way to improve, but you have to be willing to show up and actually do do the thing that maybe is a little bit scary um, or a little bit daunting, perhaps. So, and, and be, yeah. And before we, we started, I admitted to you that well, I get English is my native language. I'm a teacher. I even get a little nervous coming on every live stream. So, yeah takes a lot of guts definitely definitely (laughs) and even for me you know when I think about English Arts Academy so I started it roughly two years ago a little bit less but I had this idea for maybe five or six years and I kept putting it off Mm. so I kept not doing it um because I was scared I was scared to put myself out there I was scared to be judged I thought what are people gonna think this girl with the scouts accent is teaching English um but you know to kind of get anywhere you have to you have to do it you have to do the thing that is scary you have to put yourself out of your comfort zone I'm a big believer in that 100 percent. and the older I get I think that and I I may put my reading glasses on here pretty soon to read the comments but the older (laughs) I get the less I care about what people think I think mm. that that's a little freeing. Uh, Bob the Canadian, don't know if you know him. He did a yeah. great lesson yesterday on aging, and it, some of those points really hit home to me, like losing the hair, getting the glasses. Mm. But the yeah. good thing is, I th- I think I'm a little more confident than I was in my twenties or whatever. So getting yeah. older has its bonuses sometimes. Yeah. So do you think that helps you as a teacher then to maybe empathize? with some of your younger students about because you know how it feels to not be as confident yeah uh and i middle school i teach middle school students so 13 14 year olds and i remember very clearly how hard it was so yeah i think that's the reason why i went into teaching in the classroom is i have a lot of empathy for that age because it's a tough age for most people so yeah, but now in real life, like I don't care. Like the car I drive, it's definitely not the greatest. It gets me where I'm going. I have dad shoes. I'm like, I don't, <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. I don't care anymore. It's freeing to just not yeah. really care. Yeah, no, that's a good. It's good not to care. Yeah. Were uh, you I, nervous I, then when you started your channel? And I should say congratulations to you because I know that you hit six thousand mm. as well. Yeah. So. Thank you. <laughs> Was I, yeah, I think what helped me for the channel is that, yeah, I watched other. So some of my inspirations to get into YouTube were, and I did a video on them, but like a guy named Harold Balder and Bald and Bankrupt. He's actually from England as well. And they do travel videos. They don't teach English, but they were like, they just didn't care. You know, they'd wake yeah. up in their hair and I'm like, you know. I'm just going to be me on here. And if people like it, great. If they don't, you know, so yeah, YouTube is kind of like, it was the whatever, you know, I was just like, I'm, <laughs> I want to, I want to produce good content, but if I look like an idiot doing it, I don't care. That's <laughs> no. fine. Yeah. 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 Put it makes you on. more relatable as well. I think if you're just yourself, I think you can tell, um, 
on all social media platforms when someone is being fake or not authentically them, I suppose. I do think that comes across easily. I you know? agree 100%. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, I'm trying to think of a good English term we might say in the United States, like maybe like warts and all. Have you heard that term? Do you use that in England? Yeah, warts and all. I, yeah. To be honest, I personally don't use it, warts and all. But I, I know it and I've heard it being said. But I think maybe it's slightly outdated. Okay. I think warts and all. Or maybe it's just one that I don't say. <laughs> it's just, um, you know, we just show the real life of whatever happens. And I, I sometimes leave mistakes in and just whatever. Like this morning, I have my allergies are out of control. I thought, oh, should I go on? Like, yeah, whatever. Aww. Who cares? Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. What is it? Hay fever. I think so. And, and a dog. I'm a, I, oh. I have a dog now. And I mean, my wife has a dog. I don't have a dog, but my wife has a dog and it lives with us. And so that doesn't help. I am slightly allergic to dogs. Oh, even though he's, <laughs> he's, hey, Sean from Free 99 English is here. He's a great guy. And uh, my buddy, my buddy from Italy. I think he's actually coming to the United States next summer. We're going to get together, talk Italian with Aroni. Um, do you know? So I'm I'm just being told that my um, am I really blurry, Brent? Should I just fix my camera really quickly? Sure, go for it. Okay, for let it. me. Um, All right, I will. Uh, wonder- Karis is going to go away. She's going to fix her camera, and then I don't know how I'll know when she's ready to come back, though. Maybe she'll give me a hand signal. She could just like, hey flag me down all right so um we got a question here what's the difference between to discover and explore so they're almost the opposite they're almost the opposite so the first thing that comes to my mind is a cave is a cave those are often very dark places on the side of a mountain so often when you're at the the opening of a cave you can't see anything So you might go inside to explore. When you're inside there, you might find or you might discover a bear. I don't know. Maybe. That's what I think of when I think of caves. Inside there, there might be a bear. So they're almost the opposite. When you're exploring, you're trying to uh, look for something. And when you discover something, you actually find it. So... Um, mm, all right. Looks like Karis is ready to come back. I think that's a pretty good example. They are, they are very, very close, but, uh, a little bit different though. All right. Let's see. Karis is back. It, it looks improved maybe a little bit. <laughs> I Welcome look better, back. right? <laughs> yes. 100%. Not, no, that's you look bad before. It was, I it think was I fine. looked like a sim character before. Oh, really? Quite pixelated, but I, um, my partner quickly came in and saved the day. I was on the wrong resolution. Really? And I honestly probably. didn't notice. I really didn't notice, but. <laughs> You're too kind. Maybe you need your glasses on, Brent. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's probably the thing. That's probably the thing. <laughs> <It's> like, <"Whoa." laughs> so let's see. Freddie here, I think. I understand correctly English. I try to write without mistakes, but as soon as I speak, I'm blocked because I can't find my words. And I have to think a long time to find the right tense. Yeah, I think that's a very common problem. And I would say, see, I don't take my own advice. I am, I have been learning Italian for two years <laughs> and I'm still very afraid to speak. I love reading in Italian. I love reading memes. I can, I understand all of the memes, but there's a big difference between the input, which you do not have to produce and that output with the the now you said i think freddie said that he tries to write the good thing about writing is you are producing but you don't have to produce it so quickly your audience is kind of waiting for you longer but the speaking it, that's where the most pressure is at for sure any thoughts on um trying to make that transition Karis, from from reading or listening to speaking it's not an easy one 
No, it's not. It's not easy. And I definitely think you're not not alone, Freddie. Um, I think the best way to for you to start, because it seems like you you like to write, I'm guessing, because you say I write without mistakes. So I'm assuming that you quite enjoy writing, would then be to start reading out loud what you wrote down, um, even recording it, playing it back to yourself, because that's not it's not very scary. You've only got to listen to your own voice. And then I think it's probably a time to maybe take the next step. And if you have, say, um, WhatsApp, you would start sending voice notes um, instead of texting. So you're just trying to move away, doing these little baby steps to get you, as you said, Brent, producing the language um, a bit more fre frequently. So they would be my first steps for you. And then I think it's, if you haven't already, Freddie, maybe it's time to find a language partner of someone who you can interact with once a week, whether it is on Zoom or just by sending voice notes to help you gain the confidence. They would be my first steps for you to take. That's a great idea. I used to do that on the app Hello Talk. Are you familiar with that, Karis? Yeah, I've heard of it. I've never actually been on it. But you can do that too. You can send those messages where you prepare and if you have a language partner. Now, here's the good news for Freddie. Freddie, I'm assuming because you live in France, your native language is French. <laughs> a lot of English speakers want to learn French. That's one of the most popular languages. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be hard for you to find maybe a language partner you can speak half an hour in French, half an hour in English with a native English speaker. Yeah. If you speak another language, however, let's say Vietnamese or Cambodian or what's another Indonesian. Mm -hmm. I know there are millions of speakers, but not a lot of native English speakers are looking to learn those languages. So I do want to do a video on that on the channel. Like who's going to be... Who's going to have an easier time finding a language partner? That's your yeah. Spanish speakers. That's your French speakers. German. Your Italian speaker, German. Yeah. Uh, Japanese. That's true. That's really true, actually. I've never thought about that, Brent. That's yeah. really true. Because there are potentially more, well, widely spoken or popular languages to learn, for sure. And yeah. unfortunately, something like... I don't, Arabic is one of those like has millions of speakers. And I do think there is a percentage of English speakers who want to learn Arabic, but it's a little more daunting. You know, it's a little bit harder. We can, we can go to Italian or French. It's yeah. not that different from English, but yeah, I don't sure. know about <laughs> in England right now, but um, Japanese is really popular for Americans to learn. Is that, is that true in England? No, I know a lot of people learn Japanese as a hobby, especially if you're into anime um, or like cosplay, co um, comics. Yes. Then I know a lot of people do learn Japanese. But it's, I mean, it's not taught in schools mm -hmm. at all. You wouldn't learn, that would never be in our schools. You're lucky if you get French. Oh, why am I off? Uh -oh. We can hear you still. Oh, we can just you can't see me. Um, yeah, I'll I'll talk about the uh, let's, we'll we'll go we'll get uh, we'll let her uh, we'll let her fix that and then I'll see her. Um, but going on what Kara said about if you're learning a foreign language in the United States, you are going French and Spanish, the two most popular by far, and then I would say German is right up there and Chinese. But yeah, the people who are learning Japanese, they are they are doing that on their own. So you might be able to find a language partner that way. Let's see here. Some more questions here. Hey, Mega's here. Oh, Sam. Sam the Taiwanese. Long time no see. How are you? Hansa. I've heard nice American idiom. We're not in Kansas anymore. Yeah, we might say that we're not in Kansas anymore. And I bet that is such an American thing because Kansas is a state in the United States, one of the 50, right in the middle of the country, like basically the geographic center. Like 
if you take where I live in Maine, you take California, in the middle is Kansas. And that comes from a movie. It comes from a very old movie. One of my favorite movies ever. I'm wondering if anybody knows in the chat. Does anybody know? What movie does that come from? We're not in Kansas anymore. Dorothy says that to her little dog, Toto. Oh, it's a great movie. My wife hates that movie. I love that movie. That looks like Karis is back. Is it okay, Karis? Should I bring you back on? Okay. She's giving me the thumbs up. What's up, Karis? Ta-da! Third time's a charm, Brent, hey? Technology. <laughs> before, we, before we started, we were like, there's always something with technology. And- I'm not going to be invited back. No. <laughs> this will be the last time you see me. <laughs> not true. Not true. Anytime. Anytime. Uh, and it is great. I should say that uh, here is that we started our channels about the same time. We're growing at about the same pace. We, I think, have very similar attitudes when it comes to teaching English. So you you were invited anytime, Karis. Oh, you're always thank there. you. Thank I think you. this is the second time you've been on the channel, right? And I've second been on your channel. Third? Could be third. Yeah, I was thinking it yeah. might be three. So yeah, sure. it's always a good time. There's I know. Couple- no, it is really fun, actually. There's another guy, Gino, uh, from Real Everyday English. He's always welcome. I mean, he was just chatting with a friend that, you know, you've known for a long time. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, you guys, too. I think you would get along, too. Gino, he's started the channel about the same time, and he's great. Uh, Yeah, I think you mentioned I connected with him on um, privately, actually. Very nice. He's a great guy. Yeah. Let's see. Um, oh, Nathan is wondering, can I make this live lesson sooner? I, I totally understand. Uh, this is 10 o'clock my time. I often go nine o'clock my time, which I'm on New York time. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just, it's sometimes I can, and sometimes I can't, but, and I know Karis goes a little bit, uh, later, right? You usually go several hours after this, right? Yeah. I normally go live about 4 p.m. my time, which I, I think is about 11 a.m. for you. Okay. Um, yeah, 4 or 5 ish, I tend to go just to kind of, I find that's a nice middle ground because people from um, like South America are just starting to get up. And then I have a few people who are based in India and it's getting to their evening. So it seemed to be a nice time, a nice balance. But, but the good thing is as well, these are all recorded. So if you can't stay for the whole live, you can watch it at a later time. Absolutely. All right, let's see what else here. Oh, there was a, oh um, Karis, do you know, have you, do you ever use that? We're not in Kansas anymore. I have a No, I guys. know it. I know, I, know the, I know the film. I'm not sure. If, shall I say the film? If people, I can't do it sure. and see it in the comments. I don't so think I know anybody... it's from um, The Wizard of Oz. Very nice. But I would it never is. say it personally. And, and, and I'm, is it used in the States yeah. or is it just one of those things that maybe you might say as a joke? I would not Kansas anymore. It might be a dad joke, but you right. you are apt you you might hear it in the United States for sure. Yeah, and it and it does mean oh we're we're not somewhere nice. Is that what it, it means? Mm, we're somewhat unpleasant. Not necessarily. It's just somewhere very different than you're used to. So right. it could be unpleasant, but but not necessarily. Just mm-hmm. like things are very different. Um. Maybe let's say if there's a club, okay, and then I'm 45 years old. If I, <laughs> if I went into a club that mostly had people my age, maybe they were playing country music, right? And then the next week it was totally different. There were people who were 20 listening to like trap music. <laughs> yeah, I might turn to my friends and say, Woof, We're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> no. Maybe not a bad thing, it's just this yeah. is quite different. Maybe we should yeah. leave. <laughs> Yeah, we're too old. Yeah. All right, Elena from Russia. Oh, hi, Elena. I realized that uh, I'm not a confident speaker in any language. I'm maybe not even Russian. It's a very stressful experience for me to have a conversation with a native speaker. Happened to me with Korean, but now it's okay. So it looks like um, Elena has her name possibly in Korean also. So. Yeah, but I think the important thing there, I mean, I should say Elena... I know that you're very, very good at English because at the end of my lives, I often do quizzes, like Kahoot quizzes. And Elena has won twice. 
So she's been the winner twice. So I do know that you're you're quite good at English. The, and the I same also is think true. the same yeah. is true on my channel. She's won at least one quiz on my channel. Well, there we go, <laughs> Elena. Yeah. But I do think it's really important what you've said um at the end. So it happened to me with Korean, but now it's okay. So you've proven to yourself that you can overcome this um this fear which I think is the the important part for this uh, few sentences. That's the problem, I think, with speaking. The only way to, well, what you said was great about practicing recording yourself. That's a great one. Um, and But when you come to speaking to a native speaker, there's only one way to do it is, is yeah. actually do it. And that's so hard. That's so hard. No, Alex. What's going on, Alex? What's good? <laughs> What's good? This picture is so funny. <laughs> Look at this. Honda does know. 1939. That's how old that movie is. 1939. Judy Garland. Yeah, she was great. She's well great. Well done, Honda. Yuxa, how are you? All right, let's see. Could I open my mouth a little I'm bit Manuel. more? Oh, do you know him? I and do. Yeah. I do know Manuel from my channel. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So he would like me to uh, open my mouth a little bit more. I will, I will do my best. <laughs> Open my your mouth Manuel anymore. is very, um, you're direct, Manuel. Mm -hmm. You say mm -hmm. what you, what you want. <laughs> and the, the problem some people have too, is that my mouth is covered by my microphone. So they like to see, uh, how I make those words. Lip form. reading perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll be conscious of that. Right <laughs> All right. Another question here. What does this mean? Oh, I do not know this. Um, vote with your feet. I've actually never heard that before. Or vote with your wallet. Do Ooh. either of those ring a bell, Karis? Luong. Um, no, I've never heard of either of these. I would take take a guess. <clears throat> vote with your feet. I'm, I'm really not sure. I wouldn't even know what to guess for that. Vote with your wallet. I would assume means when you're making an important decision, or maybe it is literally when you're voting um, in an election to think about the money side of things, maybe who's going to be the best for the economy. That's what I would, that's my guess, but I've never heard these two expressions. Right. Um, neither have I really, I would agree with everything Kara said. I was just about to look them up, but you know what? I'm not going to look them up uh, because if two native speakers of English have never heard them, I would advise you not to use them because you might confuse people. So I'm not. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, Karis. Um, I, I said that. that you were always invited back. I don't know though. I don't know now. Just kidding. Hey, this, this is the great thing about live streaming is you never know what's going to happen. But uh, it, it's happened to me before. I've had to uh, abort streams just because the internet wasn't working. But all right. Look at this. Talk Italian with Erroni. Lots and lots of listening. I am a huge believer in listening. I love it. It just... The next step, the next step, my, my reading has become so much better in Italian. I've been very busy for the last three weeks with uh, school starting up, but I have been able to still read in Italian and um, it's becoming better. I just need to get to talking. All right. I think Karis is back. Let's go. Karis, we good? Karis, all right. Back. I have to apologize. So ah. you know what it is? So I've got this on my, my camera is on my phone. Um, and people are calling me on WhatsApp. Oh. And I've got a new phone. So I have to, so I got this new phone this week. Um, and it's, it's an iPhone. And it's brilliant. But I somehow have not figured out because normally when I go live, I you know, put on the do not disturb. So I, I'm private, you know, no one mm -hmm. can, I don't get any notifications. But for some reason, I'm getting WhatsApp phone calls, even though I still have my phone on do not disturb. So I clearly need to do some more digging. <laughs> if anyone has is good with an iPhone, let me know, because clearly 
I am not. Like I've done my moon, I've pressed do not disturb, I've gone into my settings, but I am I'm back and also I'm making it out like I I'm coming across really popular. Like people yeah. keep calling me. But I was just going <laughs> to say that. We know that you're very popular. The That's rest funny. of the day, my phone has been silent. Like I've had <laughs> no phone calls. And for some reason, this one hour, I've had um two phone calls. So I can only apologize. And I I will look into this to make sure this doesn't happen again. But I apologize to you, Brent. No, no, no worries. It's <laughs> fine. Whatever. Um, so Mega, I know Mega, um, channel member. Thanks for becoming a channel member. Oh, Sir, nice. you must have watched Titanic, the movie, as soon as it was released. Yeah, I am old enough to remember Titanic. 1997, my wife and I went to this movie uh, twice, actually twice yeah yeah wow it was, it was so big i don't know what you were doing in 97 but i was about know, 20 or so and uh <laughs> i'd moved down to where my my i think was, she was my girlfriend at the time but um uh, we went twice the first time i watched it i was like yeah whatever and i don't know what was going on in my life but the second time i saw it oh, i just could not stop crying really? titanic I felt yeah. like, why am I crying? It's then, a long, long movie, though. Isn't it like three and a half hours? It feels like five. I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Leonardo DiCaprio is a bit of a babe in that movie, for sure. So is Kate Winslet. Yep. Um, I was seven when that was oh, released. Wow. Yeah. So I've seen it a few times. It's one of those films that is always on around christmas mm -hmm. so it always plays in december and that's probably the only time i would put it on i would watch it now i just i would never commit to it it's too long yeah but it's a great movie obviously great soundtrack I, yes yes oh man uh celine dion celine right dion. yeah yeah <laughs> um and i think a lot of people when they look back they're like there was enough room for both of them on that door. <laughs> Wasn't that the thing at the end of the movie? Like he could have just climbed on the side. Come on, it's Jack. It's so true. Right? Yeah, she's on this big door, isn't she? Yeah, yeah, I love all the memes that come out on that as well. That's so funny. <laughs> he, he freezes. Oh, it's so sad. But yeah. such a trap. The, the worst was there was a video game after that came out where you could spin something with the tiny Titanic and win prizes. And I thought that was just such in poor taste, like 3000, how many people died? At least a thousand, right? People yeah, died on the Titanic. Based on a true story. Yeah. yeah. Seems I, a bit. <laughs> yeah. Don't make a video game out of something so morbid, but I think it was coming. Was it going, it was either going from my country to your country or vice versa. Yeah. It didn't, it, it set off. It, it, did it set off from Liverpool or was it made in Liverpool? There's a connection I, between Liverpool and Southampton, but it right. definitely was going to New York. Oh. Um, is, is Southampton close to you? No, no. no. So Southampton's the, the south of England and I'm the north, but I am oh. on the coast. Oh. But I think it was made in it was made in Belfast and in Liverpool, and then it set off from Southampton. And yeah, it was going to New York. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but we have a we have a lot of British um, cities in my part of New England. So we do have a, a Hampton, New Hampshire. Yeah, we have a Belfast, Maine. Yeah. Yeah, a lot yeah. Of... I think there's probably quite a lot of connections. Mm -hmm. You need a Liverpool. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we do. I don't think we do. No, I'm sure. But, I'm sure oh, you don't. <laughs> the Beatles, the Beatles. Ringo Starr came out with a new um, album, I think, yesterday. Really? I'm a big, I'm a big have Beatles you ever been fan. to the UK, Brent? I I have. I've been. I landed in Gatwick, uh, the airport. One of I think London has three. So I landed in Gatwick, and then I um, came to London for five days. And then a couple months after the tunnel was built, I took it back in 1995. So I think the tunnel, do you still call it the tunnel? 
the channel. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so the, the channel is the train that goes from London to either Paris or Brussels, Belgium. So yep. I took the channel to, to Brussels and back in 1995. Really? Yeah. So that's the nice. only time I've been. Yeah. But nice. I, I haven't, I haven't told anybody yet on the channel or anything, but I do think I'm going to Sweden in January. My son is playing hockey there. So I'm, I might be landing in, in London and then taken right off from there, but. Oh really? Yeah, Sweden like, will be cool though. Yeah, I haven't been there since 1995. I did a whole trip around Europe. Oh, was that like a gap year backpacking trip? Yeah, it was kind of a forced gap year because I didn't have <laughs> enough money for college, but I could scrounge enough money yeah. to go to Europe for a month, and that's yeah. what I did. Yeah. Well, that's more fun, isn't it? It was. It took me it took me like six years to graduate because I didn't have enough money, but it was, <laughs> it was worth it. It was worth it. All right, Island Resort. I remember Island Resort. Blast from the past. I'm using yeah. I'm using a lot of like English terms and not explaining them, but I hope people will kind of get our conversation. I use scrounge, blast from the past, but. That good conversation, I think, is important too. So, what's the difference between worm and warm? That might be a pronunciation thing. So, I can pronounce it. And then, Karis, if you don't mind pronouncing it, because our pronunciations will be slightly different, but yeah, yeah. I'll use it in a sentence. Let's see. Um, I'll say worms. After the rain, the worms came out. It was a warm day. Mm -hmm. Should I say the same sentence? And if you can um, remember, I can't if remember. If I can remember I said, it, but... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After the rain, the worms came out. It was a warm day. So it's really just that vowel sound that you need to practice. Um, she says it, you say it so much better than I do, too. I love the British accent. Worm, warm. <laughs> Worm, warm. So fair. Worm and warm. And I think when a native English speaker is speaking, we really, I think we just hear the context and we're like, okay, yeah. we know, you know, it was yeah. a warm day. So I'll say both. It was a warm day. It was a worm day. It's like, you know, there, but we know there's nothing like, what's a worm day? That doesn't even make sense. So I think we use the context quite a bit for that. Yeah, definitely. I think a lot of it, you have to go with the context of um, of any new vocabulary, especially if you're looking at phrases, phrasal verbs. Um, my live tomorrow actually is on common words, combinations, you know, like fish and chips, how we say things in a certain order. And I think a lot of them you have to learn just by looking at language blocks and seeing them in context. I think that helps massively. So I'm going to look up. That sounds like a, a great live. I'll look up and leave a link. Is is the live? Is it um? Is it an active uh, live on your channel right now? It should be, but yeah. the way my technology's gone today, <laughs> it makes me think it might be hidden. <laughs> Common, oh, I got it right here. So I'm going to drop a link in the chat. So if anybody wants to join your live tomorrow, so I see that I see. Let's hang on. You know what I can do. I think I can screen share. So I'll Tell drop you. the oh, link. Yeah. yeah, I'll drop the link and then right here. I think oh. I'm screen sharing. Yeah. So there's the <laughs> thumbnail. There we I can am. See. <laughs> Heart attack, lock and key. Yeah, we would never say key and lock. No, never. We would never say chips and fish. No, no. no. So there is a link, or this link right here that I drop. That is a link to Karis's live tomorrow. So, you know, bookmark that thing. I think it, you can set a reminder. She's live in 24 hours. So almost, yeah, just about this time tomorrow, you know, yes. 45 minutes later than yeah. this. But, yeah. Right. Very cool. That sounds like an awesome one. All right. So Mickey says, can I hear you guys say this tongue test? <laughs> this tongue test. I can't even say tongue twister. <laughs> This tongue twister quickly. Yeah. To begin okay. with. Now, now, why is my thing off? Let's see. 
This is how we looked before. Okay. Yeah. Can I hear you guys say this tongue twister quickly? I probably can't say this, but to begin to toboggan, first buy a toboggan, but don't buy too big a toboggan. Too big a toboggan is too big a toboggan to buy to begin to bedoggan. Well toboggan. done, friend. I ran out of breath, though. Well hmm. done. I thought you did really well. <laughs> Give me a second. I can do it again, I think, a little better. But would you like to try that one? Okay, I'll try. Okay. I'm terrible. Okay. To begin to toboggan, first buy a toboggan, but don't buy too big a toboggan. Too big a toboggan is too big a toboggan. To buy to to begin to toboggan. It's that last last yes. four words. It's so hard to get out. Nicely done, though. <laughs> oh. I'm going to try this one more time. See, I've read ooh, the glasses. That's going to help me. Okay. The glasses will help me. All right, here we go. To begin to toboggan, first buy a toboggan, but don't buy too big a toboggan. Too big a toboggan is too big a toboggan to buy to begin to toboggan. Well done, Brent. Well wow. done. Very good. Glasses. <laughs> I've never heard of that tongue twister. No, I haven't. I wonder if, did you make that one up, Mickey? I quite like it. Yeah. Um, it's good to practice the D sound. Yeah. Do you have any tongue twisters that you uh, like to practice with that you can rattle off really quickly yeah so there's a few um there's one that i can't say so i'll say that one at the end okay. so i really like four fine fresh fish for you so four fine fresh fish for you um i think is a good one um obviously peter piper is probably one of the most popular uh, the one that i personally struggle with is and it's really simple is red lorry yellow lorry and i l and r sounds are just so tricky and red lorry yellow lorry red lorry yellow lorry that's about the that's as fast as i can go because i think that is such a hard tongue twister and actually we should set a challenge brent of people mm. trying to say it and they can send it to one of our social media oh, yeah. pages because i would love to see people saying this tongue twister that would be amazing. And we yeah. don't say that tongue twister, the lorry one, just because we say truck instead of oh, lorry. Maybe. Yeah. That's so quite we, easy then. Red truck, yeah. yellow truck, red yeah. truck, yellow truck. I'm really good at that one. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like this one. I, I've practiced this one. So I hope I can do it right here. Um, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Do you ever have you ever heard of that one? Yes, and that's a really hard one. So well one. done. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun one to say. Yeah. How much that's... how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Try it. I'm, I'm not asking you to that that's too embarrassing. Which I can't I even remember it. That oh. one. It's too long. <laughs> I, I had a lot of extra time as a child. I didn't have a lot of <laughs> friends. So I practiced this in my room by myself. Um I, that the fur one that you I had never heard that before. Oh, the fish I, one. I don't dare say that on here. I think YouTube might demonetize me because I might accidentally say a, a bad word in there. Yeah. That's a tough one. Yeah. I, I love tongue twisters. I think they're really, they're, they're just good fun. I think people should incorporate them when they're trying to improve their English. Absolutely. Have you done, did you do a live lesson on tongue twisters? I don't think I have, but no. I might do one. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah scary one you know but, yeah my um, love but, pressure <laughs> yes sally sells seashells by the seashore is another one yeah do you say that one yeah but we don't say sally we say oh she so Ooh. she sells seashells on the seashore that's even harder i think yeah it's even harder i think we took the but that's easy a really way hard out. one as well <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we took the easy way out in the united states and just changed it to sally yeah <laughs> All right, so Mary, I'm not sure if you know Mary. Mary and I go way back. She's from uh -huh. Iran. I actually, I actually used. Where um, is she from? She's from Iran. Iran, Iran. Yeah, and um, there are at least three subscribers to the channel uh, from Iran, and I've I've talked with all of them, and they're great. And I actually use that as one of my examples in class. Um, we were studying something about stereotyping and governments not getting along. And I just said, you know, the United States government and the Iranian government, we don't, we don't see eye to eye. We don't get along. 
but the Iranian people are some of the nicest people you will meet. You know, yeah. they're just some, they're just like any, any nationality you get enough people together. Yeah. There are going to be some awesome people and then, you know, some not so awesome uh, people, but usually 100%. more, yeah, more yeah. awesome people. than Yeah. hundred percent. My uncle is Iranian, um, right. but he lives in Australia. And when I was in Australia years ago, um, he was making Iranian food and it was delicious. And he was, you know, explaining a little bit about Iranian culture from his experience growing up there. And um, I do think it just gets a bad rep in the media, especially in the States and in the UK, unfortunately. And um, Maz, I don't think he's here today, but he has commented recently. He's from Iran, but he lives in Australia. Ah. So not your uncle, though. Probably, not my right? uncle. <laughs> So Mary uh, has a question for you. It was around the 1990s when Bernard's Watch streamed in England? I'm not yeah. Familiar. So Bernard's Watch was a TV show that was on in the 90s because I used to watch it when I'd get back from school. It would be on around like 4 p.m. Um, and it's about a boy and he had a stopwatch. And when he clicked the top of the stopwatch, time stood still no no yeah time stood still and everyone in it so he could just go and buy sweets and travel and do his homework and then he would click the swap the stopwatch back and time would start again so it was a great show um and it was i think it just started everyone being like oh i wish i had bernard's watch or what would you do if you had bernard's watch you know it was all it was definitely like a talking point in school. But yeah, but I, I wonder how you know it, Mary. Have you seen it as well? <laughs> yeah, please leave it in the comments. Yeah. Um, yeah, Mary's great. Um, we've talked before. She ah, I think she oh, she won she won a conversation with me and then we couldn't get together, but she had she is on the channel. She um you know, our two governments are trying to keep us apart because we tried to do a, a chat like like we're doing right now, it would not happen. No. But I was able to send a postcard, I think, and she got that somehow. But yeah, That's Mary's sweet. great. That's really nice. Yeah. I wish I wish just countries could get along, right? Yeah. That's usually oh, usually our fault though, I think. Yeah, Sometimes. well. <laughs> Yeah, true. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna ruffle a few feathers, I think. We just we have to be in everybody's business, just we, we won't get political here, will we? No, it's <laughs> not worth it, is it? No. So, oh, my name was written in red. Does that manual, does that mean he sucks? No. Why is it written in red? I don't know. Your name was written in red. I don't know. Hmm. I'm not sure. It doesn't come up red for me. Hmm. Um. Oh, Anya's, Anya's answered your question, Manuel, further down. Oh. Oh, oh, oh so okay. someone was talking to you, I think. Yeah. Perhaps. So what YouTube will do is they will, and I'm sure Anya's, Anya's comment is highlighted to you in red only, but it's just so you can see it. It's because someone's talking to you. In English, we say they um, they added you, added you. Do you use that, uh, Karis? Yeah. If someone, yeah, you at them. That's a you little at, at sign. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Oh, yeah, we, um, Ario, yes, we are at this stream ends at 11. And then, um, uh, Mr. Bob's stream, Bob the Canadian, I usually go into his chat and hang out and see a lot uh, of people there. And Bob the Canadian's the best. Yeah, he's great. See, and we, uh, we don't live too far from each other. No, you don't. No, uh, we're going, we're going to try to get together next summer. But uh, it, it didn't happen this summer because of that dreaded C-19. Um, so nevertheless, the teacher doesn't have a strong American accent. I've tried hard to get rid of any kind of regional accent that I might have. And I have lived in the north of the United States. I've lived in the south of the United States. So I try. So you, what, what, how would you call your accent? I would say I have a Scouse accent. What would be a Maine accent? There, no? is a, there is a 
distinct main accent, not where I live, but on the coast. Right. So um, we might say lobstermen, that you know, lobster is a big industry in my state. And of course it happens, you know, on the coast yeah. and the old, and it probably happening in England as well, but you know, the younger people have kind of like the same accent. Those older regional accents are disappearing, I think because of television, movies, mm -hmm. social media, but you might hear a main accent, like to say, yes, they might say something like, hey, up, hey, that's. Hey, and that's about all I can say. But oh, um, and there's a funny saying that we have um, can't get there from here. That would be kind of a main <laughs> accent. Like you can't get there from here. Oh, you can't yeah. get there. I thought yeah. you were saying like, you can't get that from here. As in, like, buy something. <laughs> so um, if there's a joke, like if a tourist goes to one of these little lobstering villages and they're asking for directions. The one of the locals might say, Oh, you can't get there from here, but you should be able to get there from anywhere. But it's yeah. just, just I think, an inside main joke right there. Yeah, but you'll hear Mainers if somebody has an accent that I oh, can't get there from here. That's really? Yeah. yeah, it sounds a bit more country ish, mm -hmm. which I know that doesn't make sense because it's on the coast, but that's how I imagine it. No, I think I. Totally agree. Um, have you, I think we've talked about this off air, but the monkeys, have you heard of that band? I've heard of the monkeys. Okay. I'm going hey, to hey, say, where the monkeys? Yes. People say we're monkey and around, something like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly like that. So they're one Sometimes of my I favorite. we're live. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll keep going. I'll mute. I'll mute myself. <laughs> um, so I'm going to see them next, Oct like this October. They're, they're a band, but they have a kind of a famous um song called randy scouse get and i okay. think it is it's definitely british we definitely don't have to talk too much about it but that that's a is that a lot of slang where you're from randy yeah what scouse is it get? randy scouse yes. get yes g-i-t i think it is yeah so yeah. um if i was explaining that you don't randy to, no. normally <laughs> means would randy do you use the word randy we only use that because, and I didn't know until Austin Powers came out, but oh. I think with the Austin Powers movies, yeah, yeah. they done Randy, right? But Git, I, I would say, um, is a, a, a very, very, very mild swear word. Oh, okay. So just, just for anyone who's thinking, oh, I'm going to start calling people a Git, don't. Okay. Because <laughs> you would be <laughs> insulting them. No, it just means... Um, a naughty person in a swear word kind of I way. I think yeah. John Lennon used that one time in a Beatles song. Probably. I'm sure. Yeah. Rocky Raccoon, I think. I'm not sure. I'm a big Beatles <laughs> fan, but I can't think of it right now. But you're such a something get. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm absolutely sure. Um, yeah, it's quite old fashioned. Um, but I wouldn't recommend for people to use it in conversation. <laughs> I don't think we have too many um, questions in the chat. I'm people, oh, hang on. Maybe there's a question here. Uh oh, it would be my question too. I think I did miss something. Let's see. Okay. Mega. Why do names of people include uh, thing names like Joy, Calling Wood? Um, so I think the question is, why do people in English name their children um such strange names i guess or such odd names or name them after for example um <laughs> an american actress um named gwyneth paltrow right i think she has a child named apple yes and i yes. think michael jackson named one of his children blanket yes so. and beyonce has called one of her children blue yeah. And didn't one of I, the Kardashians, didn't na they name one of their kids West or East or something? North. North. I think it's North. Yeah. I'm sure it's North. Because their surname is West, West. isn't it? it Kanye is. West. It's, yeah. It is. Yeah. He's, he's married to uh, Khloe Kardashian, right? 
I don't know. I don't even want to know. I don't even. (laughs) I always think it was. I wanted to be wrong on purpose. Name. She. He's married to Kylie Kardashian, right? Let's go with that. I've. I've never seen the Kardashians. Have you? Have you? You don't. You don't have to answer anything. You don't. No, I. I haven't. I am. I know who they are. I mean, I think everyone probably knows who they are. You know, and they're successful businesswomen. Right. I think you can't argue with that. Not at all. Um. So yeah, let them do what they want to do. I don't necessarily agree with. Um. I think social media is a very dangerous platform in many yes. ways. Yes. Uh, but yeah, but I do know who they are for sure. Yeah. So but I think I think I mean names are so personal, and I am I am pregnant for anyone who doesn't oh. know. So and I quite like the name Joy. I have to say, That's... I think Joy is a really nice name. Sure. <laughs> but, um. I think names are just so personal to people, aren't they? Um, I was actually, I used to live in Taiwan. And oh, I know wow. that you had someone in the comments, Sam from Sam the yes. Taiwanese. Yeah, we have um, quite a few. Yawin is yeah. from Taiwan, yeah. And um, they often would have a Taiwanese name. And then when they would come to kindergarten, so nursery, as I would probably call it, at the age of three, four they would come with their Taiwanese name and it was quite common for the parents to ask the teacher to give them a, a an, an English, a British name, and then you would just name this child. Wow. Um, a lot yeah. of pressure. Too much pressure. <laughs> Too much pressure. <laughs> would, they, would they carry that name for the year or would they carry that name for the rest of their school career? Yeah, that would be their English name. Wow. Um, yeah. So for life. So it, you were naming a child. <laughs> so I wonder how Sam, or maybe Sam, if he's still here, can leave in the comments. How did you get the name Sam? Yeah. Sam the Taiwanese. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Karis, I mean, you don't have to answer this question, but is one of the options for your ch- child's name, for your baby's name, is it blanket? Are you thinking blanket? I, I'm I'm thinking blanket or duvet. I haven't duvet. quite decided. I like the sound of duvet. <laughs> it sounds French. <laughs> I think it is French. That's what we call it, a duvet. Is that not what you would call it, a duvet on the bed? I've heard that term before, but I, I don't. It's one of those terms in English that I don't really know exactly. It's a blanket of some sort. Yeah, so duvet. it's what you, on your bed. So I would get under my duvet. That's what oh. I sleep with every night. Mm. What would okay. you call that? I think we would call that a blanket, but I blanket. think a duvet might be a decorative blanket at the end of the bed, maybe. All right. But I'm not I've heard my wife use duvet and I don't I don't know what it is. Just like sconce. Have you heard of that? That's a another decoration term we use in the United States. It's I think a decorative light <laughs> sconce. A scone, a scone. No, I yeah. only know scone as a cake. Oh, <laughs> oh. You know, a nice, a nice scone. Yeah. British scone. Oh, I love a scone. Mm. Uh, no, that's so funny. I can't believe that you don't use duvet. No, we don't. It so would... you would just say, "Oh, you're hogging the blanket." Yes. That's mm-hmm. what you would use. Yeah. Yep. My wife is guilty of that. Yep. Or, <laughs> or the covers. We would say hogging the, the covers, covers. Hog, hog, hogging the blanket. Yep. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Um, and we pronounce that scone. Scone. Yep. Well, this is the divide in the UK as well. Really? So if you're from Northern England, you will be saying scone like me. If you're from Southern England, you will most likely be saying scone. Oh, yeah. So they're they're right in Southern England. They're the they're right. <laughs> they're not right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what. Um, so if anybody doesn't know, and I need to do, I'm going to visit a bakery very soon and we're going to talk about all of these cake, cupcake, scone. A scone is a very heavy kind of like dense muffin with a, with a different shape. They're usually shaped in like a triangle. Is that, no. Are we talking about different things? So a scone to me is a bread type, dessert that normally has some sort of currants in it so raisins or cranberries and then really simple to bake and I'm a terrible baker but really easy to bake um and then you would cut it in half 
And then typically you would put cream and jam on top of it. And that's how you would eat your scone with a cup of tea. Yeah. So they're normally just, I mean, people could do them in triangles, but I I think most people just do them as typical circles. Oh, wow. The easiest. Yeah. So, and they're, um, not, they're not that dense either. Oh, wow. Are they dense? Are, are they light light and fluffy? Yeah, light, like, fluffy. I'm pretty sure you just make it with flour, eggs, milk, sugar. I'm sure is, that's all you do. This is why English is so tough. We're both native English speakers, and we're talking about completely different things. I mean, Are you bread... thinking of maybe a shortbread? No. 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 And so we do have shortbread cookies. Those are a little different, but uh, you can go into Panera bread. Have you heard of that? It's a big, no, you haven't. It's a big American chain. Like almost every, you know, my city has a uh, Panera bread. You can go in there for breakfast and get a scone and the, their most popular one is an orange scone. And so they just drizzle like this orange kind of uh, frosting on top it's a drizzle though a drizzle and you eat your scone for breakfast an orange scone send me a picture of it <laughs> i, I want to see i'm quite I'll intrigued instagram <laughs> yeah for sure please do because i want to know if that is the same as, as as ours ours is if you've ever seen or had afternoon tea um or seen like a british afternoon tea you will always get a scone with your afternoon mm. tea yeah very popular oh yeah as Anya said, English tea, tea time, afternoon tea. Yeah. Now, I was only in England for five days. I loved when, so when I was there in the 90s, that people would stop in the afternoon and have tea. We had uh, on my flight home, they brought out tea and little crumpets and I love it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Afternoon snack. Yeah. We love our tea though. And people always mock us because, and it's so true like we say tea fixes everything. So say you're celebrating, you know, you've got a new job, you passed your driving test, it's the weekend, you would be like, oh, come in and have a cup of tea. But equally, if someone is sad, you would be like, come on, let's talk about it. I'll put the kettle on. Um, So we do say that tea fixes everything. That's awesome. (laughs) I think it's kind of true too. I do. I do. Yeah. Well, Karis, um, Bond the Canadian is is going live now. We're uh, a little bit over our time, but I feel yeah. like we could talk for another hour. So I think we should do this again sometime, yes. either on my channel again or your channel or a couple times, every yeah. couple months maybe. It'd be great. Yeah, definitely. No, I thank you so much for having me. And thank you for everyone who's um, participated. It's been lovely to meet some new people, see some familiar faces, some lovely comments. And I want to apologize to everyone for my um, lack of knowledge when it comes to technology. I will get better. (laughs) It made it more fun, I think. It was interesting. Well, no, you you handled it well. So I do apologize. No, not at all. Um, But yeah, it's been lovely. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, thanks so much. And um, don't forget to um, check out Karis's live stream tomorrow. Uh, Actually, you know what? 24 hours from now, I think she is going to be doing those word combinations. Why do we say um, fish and chips and not chips and fish? It just sounds awkward. So check her out. If I'm around, I'll, I'll hang out in the chat down there. So Bob the Canadian is going live. So I'm going to go over there. I should have a link. If I was a, a really good YouTuber, I would have a link to Bob the Canadian's chat. Let me see before we get out of here, Bob the Canadian. Where are you? He's going to pop up here. You might actually hear him. Let me pause that. So if you want to check out Bob the Canadian's chat, I'm probably going over there. Just a minute. There it is. Boom. It's in the chat. I want to thank you all for stopping by. Anya, she's on the screen right now. Thanks so much for moderating. Nightbot was a little... Look at that. Come on. And you know, oh, don't post links. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't post links, but sometimes they just do spamming and you just put like two emojis. Come on, Nightbot, settle down, settle down. Marcello, so good to see you. I'm sorry, I didn't, uh, when Karis and I get to talking, sometimes I don't see as much in the chat, but Marcello is here. Thank you so much, Hansa. Thanks for joining us. 
And um, I'll see you all hopefully next weekend. Next weekend about this time, maybe a little earlier. All right.